DaVinci Resolve has seven main edit commands, but one of them doesn't clearly describe how useful it could be for adding audio clips on a timeline. It's not just for B-roll or graphics. So in today's quick DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we're going to take a look at place on top and why it's not always just for placing on top, because sometimes the bottom is just as useful. Let's get into it. If you're coming from editing in Final Cut Pro, place on top is kind of like a connected clip. It'll automatically drop clips onto the first empty track above and below the clips that you already have in your timeline, regardless of where you have your target track destination patches set to. This will actually create a new track automatically for you, even if you don't have that empty track there. That's what's the beauty of this. So to show you how Place on Top is so awesome, we've got a timeline here that needs a letterbox and it needs a CinemaScope 235 mat added to it. And we can see we've got video one, video two, there is no video three created yet. Well, we don't actually need to create that. This is gonna do it for us. To drop it on the timeline, I'm gonna go to the first frame with home, mark it in with my I key, uh, go to the end with the end key, hit O, that marks the entire timeline for us. So that's important to get sort of precision three point editing going. And I'm going to click this 235 CinemaScope mat that I have over here in my bin and just hit F12. And just like that, we can see it automatically created a V3 track for us. And it has nicely gone, <laughs> we make that a little bigger, on top of all the footage below it. So that's a great way to place on top with a graphic. You can even do that with a title. So let's say we want to put a title on this um shot right here, I mark X instead of I know that's just a faster way of marking automatically marking the beginning and end is X. And let's put a title on top. The way we get to our titles is under effects library, and then choose our text right here. And then we can just click and drag straight from here instead of hitting F12, and say place on top. So that's one of the seven commands hit place on top it has restricted it to the in and out points that we had marked on our timeline. So that's why I had marked those first. If you didn't do that, it feels kind of random, the placement and how long that is. And then you have to end up trimming it later on. So I always like to mark the in and out on the timeline first. So that's placed on top with video tracks, which I think a lot of people know about that. But what I was, was new to me is that this actually places under as well with audio tracks. So this video is basically it's finished and I've got a mix that I need to drop onto the timeline. Um, we can see we've got nine audio tracks and they're, they're all being used right now. So I need a A10, I need it stereo, and I need to get that mix down there fast. So the way I'm going to do that is take my playhead to the beginning, again with hitting the home key, and I'm going to go grab that mix that I had just gotten back. And let's see, I guess let's go to the mix bin right there. We'll double click to load it into our source and it is right at the first frame of there. All I need to do, even though this is patched to A1, it's going to create a new track for us with using place on top and it's going to place on bottom. Watch this F12. Boom. Just like that. It placed my mix, the um, exact location spot I needed to based off of the beginning of the playhead. And uh, I've got my mix down there. It's ready to go. All I would need to do is hit the solo button and I could bounce this out and export it for, um, you know, for wherever I need to deliver it to. So place on top, it's not just for graphics. You could also do this for music. So I, I don't know if you understand the power of this is, is really, really great. So let's say you had lots of music tracks that you wanted to try out. You could just keep hitting F12. It'll create the new tracks in the correct format. So this is stereo because the, the original source was stereo. If it was mono, it would have created a mono track for me. Uh, you could see the powerful uh, way that you could work with this without having to deal with clicking and dragging and being sort of approximate with your locations. You can mark things with in and outs. Really, really great. Place on top. Now for the bonus tip today, I wanna to show you clean up video tracks. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take a messy timeline like this one right here where we've got all this empty space that's unused. It's wasted tracks. We've got nine video tracks. We don't need that. Um, so this will simplify things for when we go to finishing so that we're not dealing with such a mess. You go to timeline and then under timeline, you're going to go down to clean up video tracks and then flatten unused clips. And by just clicking this, it's going to smash everything down to just the tracks that it needs to show what's already on the timeline. We'll hit flatten unused clips. And just like that, the cleanup of video tracks was completed successfully and everyone's happy and everything is much, much easier to deal with when we move to further stages of effects and, and you know, color correction and whatnot. 
we're not dealing with so many different layers. Hey, thank you so much if you've stuck around until now. I'm Chadwick and this is Creative Video Tips, which is all about helping you create videos that make a difference and stand out. If this video was helpful to you at all and you wanna learn more, you gotta check out the playlist that I have loaded on screen somewhere right now. It is so full of useful DaVinci Resolve tips. And since there is so much more to learn, I'll see you in that next video. Oh, and uh, maybe subscribe.